Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And you might notice that my garage looks a little different today and that's because one of the only vehicles that could actually get me to put down my keyboard and mouse and pick up an Xbox controller just arrived. This is the tier 10 British heavy tank, the Chieftain Mark VI, and it is an absolute beast. I've been wanting this vehicle for years and I finally got my hands on it. Firstly, I'm going to give you a full rundown of the statistics of this vehicle. Follow it up with some ace tanker gameplay and let you guys know what to watch out for and if this vehicle is going to be simply the best tank that has ever been put into the game. So the last time I played on the Xbox was about a year ago and so I'm absolutely thrilled to see some fantastic features hitting World of Tanks console. Take a look at this, there's an in-game model viewer, something that we still don't have the luxury of having on the PC. Here you can see exactly where the engine is of your tank, so you can learn about where you probably want to try and hide, and perhaps maybe where you want to shoot on the enemy team. There's the radio as well, so if you're inclined and you want to take out the radio capabilities, or more importantly, the Amarac locations of your tank, how frustrating is it to be constantly amarac in your vehicles and you just don't know why? And look how cool this is! You can see where all of the crew are. We have the driver at the front, then we have the gunner on the right, and then I believe, oh sorry, no, it'll be the loader on the right, and then we have the gunner who is being piggybacked by the commander. Do you know what? This is a top quality feature and takes a little bit of the RNG out of things when you actually figure out where you can shoot the enemy tank to knock out individual crews. Console also has an armor thickness model viewer. Absolutely fantastic in the raw client. I usually have to go onto tanks GG to be able to check this out. Now, I'm going to highlight one of the worst things about the Chieftain immediately, and that is the lower plate, where you can see that the whole of the front of the vehicle is between 71 and 90 millimeters of armor, and so that means that that lower plate is just a gigantic weak point. However, the upper plate, while it isn't the thickest armor, up to about 80 millimeters there on the upper plate, it is very well angled, which means that when a shell is going to hit it, unless they're aiming down on the tank, then it is going to pretty much be an auto ricochet. So while just above the turret ring we can see that the Chieftain's armor is rather thick, there are a couple things that you certainly want to watch out for on when you're playing this vehicle, or alternatively take advantage of if you are shooting at a Chieftain Mark VI. Number one, the cupola on the top. It is rather flat and easily penetrated by shells of 200 millimeters of penetration. And also, if the Chieftain is not using his 10 degrees of gun depression, then you can simply shoot above the gun here. It's got about 230 millimeters of effective armor. However, remember, as soon as the Chieftain is depressing his gun, this armor is going to be very thick, and pretty much unless you hit the cupola on top of the tank, you aren't penetrating a hull down Chieftain that is using 10 degrees of his gun depression. I should also highlight that the side armor on this tank is simply awful with 51 millimeters down the side here, an easy penetrating shot. And if you've got high explosive rounds and you catch the back of a Chieftain, you could do some serious damage to it. So now let's talk about one of the highlights of the Chieftain, and that is the 120 millimeter gun that this vehicle gets. It has the second highest DPM of any heavy tank in World of Tanks. It is simply amazing. And when we also take into account the fact that the T57 Heavy has an auto loader, this is the highest single shot DPM that you can get on any heavy vehicle. And if that wasn't enough, the gun also has a variety of other features that make it truly special. Number one, 1 1.5 seconds aim time. That is the best aim time on any heavy tank in the game. It also is the second most accurate gun on any heavy tank in the game with 0.32 meters dispersion at 100 meters. That is only 0.01 worse than the Tiger II, which I didn't know before now was the most accurate heavy tank in the game. Furthermore, this vehicle gets APCR as standard, flying at 1,372 meters a second. That makes this vehicle behave a lot more like a medium tank than a heavy. And also, if you're an FE215B driver, you'll know that the 35 rounds of ammunition that that tank has quite often means that you have to dip into your APCR rounds at the end of the game. You're not going to have to do that with this. Well, I guess your APCR rounds are standard, but shall we say the premium APCR rounds on the Chieftain, as you've got 64 rounds of ammunition in your tank. That's more than enough to kill the enemy team probably two times over. The vehicle is also ridiculously flexible. As I previously mentioned, 10 degrees of gun depression. That is three degrees better than the FV215B. That's two degrees better than any other tier 10 heavy tank, such as the T110E5 that has eight degrees of gun depression. And also, if you find Find yourself in an awkward position down a slope, then you've got 20 degrees of gun elevation. The Chieftain is just getting better and better by the sounds of it. But I also forgot one last feature of the gun slash ammunition of the Chieftain, and that is that it gets 
Hesh rounds is standard for its high explosive rounds, a lot like the FV215B, except they have 140 millimeters of penetration. And so if you're able to penetrate the enemy tank, you are going to turn your already crazy 2,900 DPN up to an obscene 3,745. So many of you now might be thinking, well, it's probably got the best gun on any heavy tank in the game, and it's got some pretty okay armor, except for a weak point on top and a terrible lower plate. So surely it must be balanced out somewhere else, and you'll be surprised to know that the mobility of this tank also isn't really that bad. Its top speed limit is 42 kilometers an hour. It goes 15 kilometers an hour backwards as well, which is better than the FV215B, which is very, very, very depressing in these British tanks with their terrible side armor when you're easily flanked. So going from 12 kilometers an hour backwards on an FV215B up to the 15 on the Chieftain is very, very nice. Unfortunately, the vehicle doesn't have the best power to weight ratio though, however, at 13.71, that is only slightly better than the FV215B. However, the tank falls behind with its ground resistances. Its ground resistances are 1.2 on hard, worse than the FV215B's 1. And on medium, the ground resistances are 1.4 compared to the FV215B's 1.2 and also on soft down to 2.1 rather than 2 on the FV215B. And it should also be mentioned that the Chieftain doesn't exactly have the highest hit points at 2,200. The FV215B has 2,500 hit points. And furthermore, the Chieftain's view range is 390 meters, while the FV215B's is an awesome 410. So while there are certainly a hell of a lot of awesome things about the Chieftain, it's not all bad news for the FV215B. But you know what? I think that's quite enough theory crafting. Let's see what this thing can do in some gameplay. Okay, that guy really goes on a bit in Xbox, but let's not worry about that too much. Let's take a look at the glorious model that the Chieftain has. Oh, I should also mention that I'm playing on a map called Great Wall, and PC players, just like me, um, yeah, this is not on the PC, and this is the first time I ever played this map, so <laughs> this was a bit of a learning experience for me. But nevertheless, take a look at the mobility of the Chieftain downslope, obviously that 42 kilometers an hour is rather nice. Uh, a lot of other heavy tanks such as the T125 would be limited, especially when going downhill. But unfortunately, now we're trying to get up the slope and the, the very mediocre ground resistances and definitely mediocre power to weight ratio that the Chieftain has does make it quite slow going up this hill, but still not too bad, 14 kilometers an hour, we're not that far behind the M48 in front, and just take a look at the model of this tank. I absolutely love it, just playing this tank for me just feels so right. I, it really does look very futuristic, this tank, when you think about it. Really starting to, to push the British tanks further and further on, but ah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to let it slide just so I can get my hands on the Chieftain right, guys. So yeah, the M48 has made it up the slope. We're just about to uh, make it up there ourselves. And I was thinking, well, what do you do when you're playing on a, on a version of the game that you're really not used to? You're playing with a controller. What, where do you go on the map? On a map that you've never played before as well. Well, I want to go to the corner because I feel like if I go to the corner, then I'm not going to get flanked as easily. And that M48, he just really wanted to go and ram into the IS-7. And so what I'm going to do while he's fight, fighting the IS-7 is just pick apart the Leopard prototype. I want to take out the medium tank, and then I want to be able to focus on the heavy. And here we go, just ripping apart that Leopard prototype. Just take a look at the rate of fire of this tank. This is 120 millimeter main armament. Fair enough, I am using a gun rammer, using vents, I've got a really good crew, and I'm also deciding to use pudding on this tank. But take a look, it looked like the IS-7 was aiming at our turret there. He hits our gun, he knocks our gun out, but he doesn't damage our tank. We take his tracks off and we start to get round him. Put another round into his back, and it doesn't look like, oh, looks like I'm doing a little better right now with the controller than that guy is. But I make a mistake of auto-aiming at the IS-7. And auto-aiming at the side of that fantastic IS-7 armor is not a good idea. So we're going to manual aim one down into the side of the vehicle there. I give him a little bit of a ram to detrack him, and it looks like one of our friends manages to finish him off. So what an absolutely great start so far for the Chieftain. Seven rounds into enemy tanks, one kill, and I guess that's three critical hits and some assistance damage as well. I like the ribbon system in, in World of Tanks Xbox just as much as on the PC, although I am looking forward to patch 916 for the PC when we're actually going to see how much spotting we've done in the game. So having taken that northeast corner of the map, now I want to push in. 
So we spot the T30, and I'm not, I'm actually tunnel visioning a little bit here until a little bit late. I could have probably put one into the Amex 1390. And this is one of the best things I feel about the tank, is these crazy APCR rounds with their over 1,350 meters a second velocity. It allows you to snipe in a heavy tank like no other. Great shot there, I will admit, for, for someone who's using a controller. <laughs> Maybe for the first time in a year. <laughs> we managed to take him down. And now we turn our attention to the WT Alf Panzer IV. Now you see me loading those Hesh rounds that I've been telling you about. 140 millimeters of penetration, 500, over 510 average damage there. We put 552 damage into him, and then it looks like maybe one of the artillery's finish him off. Try and get a shot there into the T-32, put one into the 1390, and I realized that I loaded the wrong kind of APCR ammunition there. And I think I fire a premium APCR round. Now back to the standard APCR rounds, and we completely fluff a shot like a potato there into the side of that pagoda. So I guess this great wall map truly is from China now. <laughs> it's starting to make sense. <laughs> it just dawned on me. <laughs> no. But okay, we're trying to push our way into the enemy base, but we've got to get through this choke point right now. And that's a little bit awkward for this vehicle, because remember, the lower plate on the Chieftain absolutely sucks. And so if the enemies do aim at your lower plate, then it does make the Chieftain rather bad for these, shall we say, push situations. If I'm in any other heavy tank, I could probably side scrape around the corner very easily here. And I'm going to try and do that in the Chieftain, but I need to watch out with my 50 millimeters of side armor. We put one into the T-32. Looks like he takes another shell from one of our friends. And I still haven't quite got used to the, the rate of fire on the Xbox as we do fluff a shot there against the T-30. We put another one into the T-32. Our friend finishes him off. And now all we have to deal with is this T-30 round the corner. But I don't really want to lose another 750 of my hit points. If he high rolls, he'll be able to finish us off. And so I bravely wait for the Ferdinand to go round the corner. My friends deal with him very well. And an artillery just splashes near us. And we're very lucky that that shell didn't actually hit the tank. Because remember that the Chieftain's hull armor isn't all that thick. And so this tank does not take artillery shells very well. Before this game, I did play a few rounds in the Chieftain, and I can tell you, when you do get hit by artillery in this tank, especially against the high caliber guns such as on a T-92, you're going to be losing probably about 800 to 1,000 of your hit points, which is kind of a third to half of the hit points of your vehicle to start with, right? So it looks like there's a T-125 protecting base, or is he going to be AFK? But we've loaded one of the Hesh rounds because I want to get revenge on that M5355. Oh yeah, 450 damage done there. If we fired the standard APCR rounds, we would have had to get really lucky to be able to take that guy out. But with the 140mm penetration Hesh rounds on this tank, with 510 alpha damage, we would have had to get seriously unlucky to not one-shot that tier 9 American self-propelled gun. So we've pushed our way through, it looks like we won the northeast, looks like the enemy team won the southwest, and it's now a case of how many tanks can you get into the cap circle quickly. Looks like we've got four cappers, they've got two cappers, <laughs> Twitch chat represent all of the cappers, and we're going to be able to uh, cap this one out. Great result here, looks like I did 15 shots that penetrated the enemy tank and did damage, nine critical hits, five lots of assistance, and this is a very satisfying feeling with the Xbox. You see like like it's like a slot machine. You feel all of that, that experience and the credits popping up. And then just continuous medals being thrown at you. And it was very satisfying for me to get an ace tanker um, in one of my first games on the Chieftain and also a high caliber medal. 5,778 damage done for those 15 penetrations and 2,519 assistance because we were always at the front. And we also blocked quite a lot, 1,370 damage blocked, a lot of that from the IS-7 who was auto-aiming at the Chieftain early on. Well, he might not have been auto-aiming, maybe he was just trying to aim at the central mass of the vehicle. And that certainly did punish him because the turret armor is rather nice on this tank if you don't hit the weak points. And the upper hull armor on the Chieftain is excellent with it so well angled, even though it's not the thickest, but it's thick enough to avoid the overmatching of shells. Just all round an absolutely incredible tank and a great round and a thrill for me to be having one like this on the Xbox. So let's get a little bit more gameplay in the Chieftain and one of the things that I love about this tank... Yeah, when you've got high shell velocity it makes um, shooting at, at tanks without giving lead eye using the auto aim really sweet on this tank because it doesn't give them enough time to be able to adjust the momentum of the tank for the server side reticle. 
and also having that 1.5 seconds aim time and fairly good gun dispersion values does make this tank excellent for firing on the move. So we advance through the ridge on Swamp, we get to the other side, and now we get to use the 10 degrees of gun depression that this tank has. I just think that this is probably one of the best ridgeline warriors on the Xbox right now. Great turret armor, crazy rate of fire, good penetration, 10 degrees of gun depression. I really want to have this on my PC account so unbelievably badly. But if you guys are an Xbox player, then I, you know, I just thoroughly recommend picking one of these up. So we put a round there against the E100, try to penetrate him with our standard rounds. However, 270 millimeters of penetration doesn't do very well against the E100. And I have been ambushed by a Batchatillon here. He's put two, I think, maybe three rounds into the side of our vehicle. We've managed to get down into a ridge now. He doesn't seem to be so confident. Let's see if we can put a round into him. We just track him, unable to put one into his main hull. I probably shouldn't have auto-aimed there. So let's finish him off with the manual aim. So now we've just got to deal with the E100 on the enemy team. And you see me load a premium round. The premium round should be useful for going through the turret of the E100. But I was not expecting him to do that. He turn, doesn't turn his tank with me. And so these are completely unnecessary premium rounds at the end of the game to shut down the E100. But again, a solid result for the Chieftain. So all in all, the Chieftain Mark VI is certainly one of the most fun vehicles that I've ever had the pleasure of playing in World of Tanks. And it's also really competitive. I was, I was just saying how many best-in-class things it has. Well, second best DPM on any heavy tank, the best aim time on any heavy tank, the second best accuracy on any heavy tank, as well as those Hesh rounds which give it a lot of flexibility, crazy turret armor, crazy upper plate armor, best uh, tier 10 heavy tank gun depression of 10 degrees. Uh, it is, I would say that this tank is pretty damn overpowered at the moment on Xbox. And so if you can go and get your hands on one of these, because you've got the Conqueror and you're willing to grind through that about 250,000 experience that you need to be able to get the Chieftain, it is totally worth it. And that last little bit of what I said might be of key interest to you PC players out there. The fact that the Chieftain leads on from the Conqueror, but it hasn't replaced the FV215B. Now simply the Conqueror turns into two tier 10 British heavy tanks. And so maybe this gives us an indication of what they might do with the PC, but I just have no idea when we're gonna be seeing the Chieftain, unless you play on the Chinese server, of course. All I know is that while playing this tank on the Xbox has been satisfying, it has also increased my hunger to have this on the PC. So please, 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 please war gaming anything. I'll do anything. Please just let me have this on the PC. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please consider giving it a like. It really helps the channel out. And let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see me occasionally release Xbox videos, maybe covering the new novel content that it seems to be coming out on console more and more. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.